Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gamba Red, and today we'll be going over a rodent study that uses the same dose of joules per centimeter squared, but different intensities and exposure times. Now this is a rodent study, but there are some very important lessons that we need to learn from it, so that way humans don't encounter the same problems, which I fear might already be happening. So this study used 60 joules per centimeter squared, in one test, they used 600 milliwatts per centimeter squared for only 100 seconds. In the second test, they did 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared for 1,200 seconds, about 20 minutes. So obviously they had to adjust the exposure time to make sure both groups were getting the same joules per centimeter squared. Now, according to the most popular dosing theory is that both of these doses are the same. 60 joules per centimeter squared, doesn't matter how fast or how slow you deliver it, you're getting the same amount of energy it's basic thermodynamics, we should be getting the same biological response. Now this follows the law of reciprocity, which is the law of science around how photochemistry works. So since theoretically both these doses would produce the same benefit, then the marketing pitch is why not use the higher intensity and save some time. Well, they monitored the skin temperature during these tests. They found with the high intensity, the skin temperature reached 50.2 Celsius. And with the low intensity, 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared, it went up to 39.1 Celsius. Now this study established a damage threshold that they wanted to stay below 43 Celsius to reduce the risk of heat damage. So the high intensity at 600 milliwatts per centimeter squared went far beyond the damage threshold. So even though they both delivered the same energy, because the intensity was so high, the skin didn't have enough time to thermoregulate and it overheated very quickly. And so this is a very obvious example how the law of reciprocity does not work, especially when it comes to heating effect and heat damage. But that's not all. They added a cooling fan to the mix in another set of experiments. This is not to be confused with the fans that are built into panels to keep the device from overheating. These are fans that are blowing on the skin to keep the skin cool. So this time with the cooling fan, the high intensity only reached 42.7 Celsius. So they were just below the damage threshold. And with the low intensity, there was practically no temperature change. It only went up by 0.6 Celsius. So this study concluded, and I quote, Increased air circulation provided by a simple house fan was effective for cooling down the skin sufficiently to avoid damage. So I recommended this years ago that using a cooling fan combined with red light therapy would help keep things a lot safer, especially as people keep using high intensity panels. So again, very simple principles. I've been advocating this for years. If you need to see it on a study, then here you go. And unfortunately, I'm seeing these issues being reported on social media more often. So because I'm good at doing research, I can see these problems from years away. 